What kind of naughtiness are we getting into? Not top water, that's later. It's gonna be some jig action, boys. Let's get to it. July is here, I'm covered with sunscreen, and it's a perfect time to talk about sneaky jigs. This time of year, you can throw a million different jigs, flipping jigs, shaky heads, but what we're gonna talk about today is two kind of sneaky, offshore structure oriented jigs that I use to target some of these fish because really there's a there's this transition July June August it all depends where you're located and where you fish but these fish really turn to panfish brim bluegill sunfish things along those lines and a jig is a perfect way to mimic those what's nice is these fish that are eating brim panfish things along those lines they're usually pretty big, so you're gonna catch some sizable critters. I buy a lot of like naked jigs, so a lot of my jigs are just in here. No skirt, no nothing at all. Um, I, I basically make my own skirts. I have a few like custom ones that, that all, it, actually if you go back, uh, shot a little video, stop wasting money on jigs. I make a bunch of custom skirts so I can have basically what's a custom jig. Cause that's all what these companies are doing is they, they're basically tying their own skirts and sometimes they'll pour their own jigs, but a lot of times they're sourcing the jigs and then they're just throwing custom skirts on there. Um, so that's one thing that I do as a tweak across all my jigs. There's really two that stand out and you're gonna laugh at me immediately cause one is a football head. Now you're gonna be like, bro, like I'm not two years old. I'm not in second grade. Yeah, I, I, I know you guys know how to fish. But this one's a little bit tweaky. So, uh, and I can't take credit for it. My buddy Justin Lynch put me on it. Um, this is a stand-up football jig. So if you see on that head, it has kind of a flat side. So basically when it's sitting on the bottom, the bait is actually standing up. And you guys know how much I love throwing a Ned head. Um, it has that same Ned head kind of concept. It has a nice rock to it too. So it keeps that bait at a 45 and you can actually do that with the jig where you kind of like rock it forward. It still runs just as clean across rock, across wood. I mean, you're still gonna get hung up from time to time, but it runs just as clean across those things. Um, the only thing that I will warn you with this guy, so you guys watch a lot of the videos, I hope at least, and if you don't, hit that like and subscribe button. But the hook on this guy, this is a boss jig, so unless you can get some custom pours, the hook is a standard wire jig. You know, it's not super thick, it's not super thin. I do open these up, but when it comes to opening them up, it's like seven, eight nine pound fish and i had a day when i i still caught 30 pounds but i could have had near 40 and it was because they bit this jig and this jig was the magic but i opened it up dude so keep that in mind if you're dealing with really like mondo fish or super tugging fish you're either going to have some bend to play in the hook or you might need to upgrade but this jig is really integral because it looks different everybody's throwing a football jig but that stand-up style head really sets it apart so this one is my super sneaky one and i absolutely love this jig it's geared maybe more towards your smallmouth and spotted bass fisheries but i've caught a a ton of largemouth on it and it's super simple it's amazing how much simple stuff is is always just such a go-to it's a ball head dude so this is once again a boss ball head um i believe War Eagle also makes it. They call it a finesse ball head. My buddy Josh Holly put me on this jig. He fishes a lot for spots um, down around the Coosa River and that. And basically, it's, it's a simple ball head jig. It's much like you'd imagine, like a shaky head or a traditional old school ball head. The trick with this guy is it has a little statter hook. You know, this time of year, you're putting a bit bigger trailer on the fish tend to fight a bit harder because the water temps are up. I like that stout hook. It's kind of a mag hook, but at the same time, I can throw it on 15 pound. 17 pound fluorocarbon and still set the hook. Has a pretty stout brush guard too, especially compared to some of your smaller ball heads. But what's really cool with this, and in particular the boss one, is it has that angle line tie. So what ends up happening is it has a very nice drag across the bottom. Um, sometimes when they have that straighter line tie, I feel like I get hung up more. This jig does not hang on most anything except wood. You gotta be careful around lay down trees. It will get hung occasionally in that, but it rides pretty clean through rock especially. And it's really set up, especially for smallmouth, with that shorter shank hook like that or a spot. Um, it can help you to deal with some really big smallmouth that, that are on maybe like a gravel bar or a big rock bar. But what's really nice about this thing is it has a very subtle fall. Even though it's a half ounce, 
meaning I can slang it, it falls very slowly. So this jig is really good around sort of those clingy crevice oriented hard bottoms, uh, gravel, big chunk rock, things along those lines. I use this a lot around the dam, um, which has a lot of big chunk rock, a lot of big crevices and drops, and it runs super clean through it. Um, I don't know why. I, maybe it's because of the circular head, but it actually runs better than a football head. Um, and it, it tends to float up over stuff better if I keep my rod tip high I can just kind of flick it over and flick it through a lot of that shell and that rock that you'll find down by the dam but the beauty of all of these is they really mimic what the fish are focused on right now which is brim like they're eating brim not all of them you know making a generalized statement but a lot of these fish are eating brim and when you start looking at this style of football jig it really looks like your panfish. You know, you can tweak it out. If you have sunfish, you can add some orange, some yellow in there. If you have just kind of like green and white bluegills like we have, maybe with a little blue, there's a little bit of purple fleck in there, blue fleck, a little bit of pumpkin. It's perfect for mimicking those brim. And you can size it down or size it up, all depending on how you cut the skirt. You'll notice that this skirt's pretty, pretty darn large and flowing. Well, I have some other ones where I've actually um, downsized the skirt and made it a little more of like a finesse skirt. See how, how short that one is chopped? So I can size it down based upon the size of those panfish and really tweak my presentation to mimic perfectly exactly what those fish look like. So let's get out some of these trailers right here. I have a lot of trailers. Thunderhawk, these are weird actually. These are kind of fun. They're like that elastic plastic. I got craws, I got old school like chunks. I got a million different things. So let's wrap this thing up on trailers. So what do you put on the back of your jig? So this is where I'm gonna kind of throw you sort of a mixed bag. What I find is is as we get into this mid to late summer kind of deal, it's sort of like uh, it's sort of the, the inverse of spring. So you have winter, you want super subtle like baits and trailers, and then that peaks through spring. You know, these fish get super active, they're spawning, they're moving around. So then you hit summer. So it sort of peaks right at that tip of summer. And then as we go through summer, I sort of go back to that, that winter philosophy. I want things more and more subtle because as that water gets hotter, these fish get a little more lethargic every day. So depending on where you're at and your way your water temps go, you're gonna kind of hit that peak at different times. So for me personally right now, I'm in that subtle mode. So the things I'm putting on the back of the jig are super simple and old school. So Gambler Chunk, it literally, it doesn't do that much. It has a little bit of a kicking action to it, but for the most part, it, it's very much like a gliding action. It just kind of makes the, the jig sort of pendulum down a little bit. I like that because I don't want to be super disruptive. I don't want it to, to do a bunch of kicking. Three weeks ago, I'd want it to be going brrrr. I know how much you guys like my sound effect. I wanted to move a lot more. So three weeks ago, I'd have been doing something like, you know, like a rage crawl or a burner crawl, something with some, some kicking style appendages. So as that jig is either moving over cover or penduluming down, it's got some added kicking action. Another little one that I like to do that's a little bit sneaky is you guys know um, Rage Tail and the Menace. Um, it's a great way to kind of bulk up a jig and, and still have some kicking action, but be subtle about it. So it's got that sort of grub style body, which is perfect for threading up the jig, but it's got two little kickers, but they're very, they're very tight, very subtle. It has a very soft kind of vibration to it, a very kind of like tight little kick. Um, I like that because it it's sort of moderate. You know, it's perfect for these transitional times as we get super hot. It's a perfect way to put a little bit of kick, a little bit of action on the back of the jig, but not overpower it. One of my favorites is this guy right here. We talked about mimicking brim. This is a mega daddy, but basically any big craw bait with some big paddles on it. What's really cool with these guys is yes, they do kick a bit, but it's not like a like a a bit like a ribbon tail style kick so basically these will kind of wave in the water versus like the the kicking appendages like on a on a burner crawl rage crawl things along those lines that actually do some kicking these guys just kind of flow back and forth and wave in the water but it's a great way to bulk up so one of the stinkiest jig trailers i do is what i call a wacky jig um it's it, i've been doing it for years i think i put up the first video on this in like 2014 or something like that um uh, not saying i'm the one who originated it. i'm sure there's some old guy like in the middle of nowhere is like i did that you know so 
but it works and it's the dumbest looking thing ever the one thing i'll tell you though is you need the right kind of stick bait in order to do it i like doing it with a Domeki stinger or a gambler obese if you have some bigger fish it's a little bit bulkier but your plastic needs to be semi i wouldn't call it stiff but it needs to have some spring to it. You cannot do this with just your standard stick bait or something like that. Do not do it with a Senko. A Senko is like the worst because it's super soft. It doesn't doesn't twitch because you got to get that right action. If you guys remember back that, that MLF tournament out here in Gunnersville, so they're catching a bunch of fish that were near brim beds or near bluegill beds on a wacky rig. A wacky rig is one of the best ways to mimic brim. So basically this takes this that same concept and bulks it up a little bit. So what you do is you basically take your stick bait. Um, I think this is the, the four inch stinger and you find the middle of it. It's, it's so dumb and so simple and you just run the hook through almost like it's a chunk. It looks really dumb. Now we're a little offset there. We gotta go up just a little bit. See, we all make mistakes, right? There you go. So it looks really dumb, but what ends up happening, especially if you got fish that are eating a Nico rig or something like that, and you need something that can go through a little more cover, maybe that's a little more bulky, a little more weedless, this thing absolutely kills it, and it really looks like that brim. What's cool too is it really slows down your presentation. There's a little bit of drag that's caused by that wacky rig, so when you're actually shaking it on the bottom, it forces you to actually fish that jig a bit slower, but it's something they have not seen. They really don't see it, and I know it looks stupid. I keep saying that, but I can guarantee you it gets bit, probably because it doesn't get seen, but it also combines probably one of the most fish-catching sort of finesse rigs other than maybe like a fluke or a drop shot or something, and that's a wacky rig. The fish just react to a wacky rig in, in a positive manner, even neutral sort of oriented fish. But try this one. This one's an absolutely killer rig. If you got bigger fish, put an obese on the back. You can trim down the skirt and make it a super finesse kind of sneaky jig. But this trailer, if none of those other ones work, especially late in the summer, try out that wacky jig. I'm sweating bullets, dude. <laughs> so if you're sweating bullets where you're at, grab yourself a jig, get out there, mimic some of those brim. Make sure and take a second to hit that like and subscribe button if you guys like the videos and like the content, whether it's swimsuit girl, jig fishing, techniques, or just doing a little bit of bass slanging, dude. And we will see you back out on the water. I'm going to go try to catch me some bass, probably on a jig, actually. Tight lines, guys.